coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Jesus is the Son of God. He's not just a prophet. He's the Son of God. You know that he was crucified. You know that he died. You know he actually died. He bore your sins, bore your sicknesses, went to hell for you. And you know that by the power of God, by the greatest display of God's power ever, greater than creation, by the display of resurrection power, he rose again with you in mind. Som to chuku. Som to chuku. Maka. Aka chuku e meriwo. Som to chuku. Maka. Oku chuku. Buebe. Mba kwa si uku. Som to chuku. Maka. Amara chuku juobim. Som to chuku. Maka ebube chuku di ebe nine. Som to chuku. Som to chuku. Som to chuku. Okwe siri. Kaine to chuku. Get your copy of Dancing with Your Spirit, the book by Pastor Nkechi Ene. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to be with you on every episode of Fresh Dew. This time of the year is really exciting because we go from one interesting season to another. We've just concluded the Thanksgiving season, even though every day of the year should be Thanksgiving. And now we're stepping into the season of Christmas where we begin to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, we can always begin to argue as to whether Jesus was really born on the 25th of December or not. And I always say this every year. It doesn't really matter when he was born. What is more important is that he was born. And there are lessons we can learn as believers and unbelievers from the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, today I'm going to start a message. I'm going to do a message titled, When You See His Star. I said start because I'm used to taking series. Well, this is a one-off message and it's titled, When You See His his star, when you see his star. Our text is from Matthew chapter 2, and I'll, I'll read from verse 1 to 12. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. For we have seen his star. That's where the title came from. In the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star, which they had seen in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. 
Amen. So when you see his star, well, first of all, let's settle this, that they were not three wise men. That's something most of us grew up being told, and we even sang songs about it. There's nowhere in the Bible that tells us they were three wise men. They were wise men who gave three kinds of gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's the power of religion. Just pick up things and you don't actually check the Bible. So they were not three wise men. These were just wise men who saw the star. So in this story, we're told that the wise men saw the star in the east and where they were coming from. And this star for us, we will use this star to symbolize the light of salvation which you receive when Jesus Christ comes into your heart as Lord and Savior of your life, the light of salvation. I'll just show you, show you two scriptures we can, we can fall back on for this. Numbers 24, verse 17. I see him, him, talking about Jesus, talking prophetically about Jesus. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star, a star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of Tumult. So Jesus was prophetically referred to in the book of Numbers as a star, as a star that would come out of Jacob. Second Peter 1.19 talks about the revelation that happens in your heart when you come to know Jesus Christ and begin to understand his word, which is very different from what happened in the Old Testament. Verse 19 says, we have also a more sure word, a more sure word of prophecy, more sure than they had in the Old Testament. Whereunto you do well that you take heed, I'm reading the King James, as unto a light that shineth, or a lamp that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Well, some of us who are watching, you know, some of us are yet to make that decision to receive the light of salvation into, your, into our hearts. And I believe that, you know, I pray that before this, you know, year is over, in fact, at the end of this program, you'll say the prayer of salvation and receive the star, receive the light of salvation into your heart. Some of us made that decision for salvation this year, and this year will always remain special and glorious to us because we saw the star and we received the star. Some of us have received the star or seen the star, received the light of salvation in, in, in Christ Jesus so many years ago. But we still do not know the things that accrue to us or the things that should be seen in us when we see the star. So we're going to look at three points very quickly. Things that, you know, we should, we should, we should see or things that should happen to you when you see the star. Now let me just say this. We said that these wise men saw the star in the east. I don't think the star was was only visible to those wise men. So it means there were other people who probably looked up into the sky, saw the star, and moved on. It meant nothing to them. But these wise men looked up and they got something. They knew that something was about to happen that would change their lives and indeed change the entire world forever. And they were wise in that regard and they began to follow the star. Glory be to God. That's how some of us, you know, we stay around the word of God. We stay around the preaching of the word. We hang around born again Christians. We hear the word of God, but it's just like any other star. We talk about Jesus. Sometimes some people use Jesus as a curse word or as a swear word. No, no, this wasn't just any ordinary star. But I believe that thousands of people saw that star and it meant nothing to them. But these wise men saw the star and they knew that something very critical, very important was about to happen to them. So may we understand that the word is near us. The word of salvation is right there in our hearts and in our mouths. And all we need to do is believe in our heart that Jesus is the son of God. All the messages you've been hearing, all the gospel that has been preached to you, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. All the things you have been told, all the people who you know when they got born again, and you have seen the change in them, but you try and rationalize and logicalize the change. It's time to be like those wise men and look up and actually see the star and receive the light of salvation into your heart. Well, for those who have done that, who have actually seen the star, what are the things that really begin to happen? First of all, you become bold before any king. You become bold before any king. The Bible says that in the days of Herod the king, this was Herod the Great, he was called. He was very popular for his cruelty. He was known for his meanness. People were scared of him. In fact, one might say that the wise men were not wise to have gone to Herod, you know, to have gone to the place where Herod was king because Herod was known for his greatness. But you see, that's what happens when you see the star. You become bold before any king. In fact, before that, the king, every king actually becomes troubled. Look at what he says here. He says, the king heard this and he was troubled 
and all Jerusalem with him. He was troubled because they said, we have seen his star and we've come to worship him. You know, for most of us, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the things that had rulership, that's kings, over your life, they began to get agitated and troubled. If your body ruled you with sex, your body began to get agitated when you said, my body is a temple of the living God. I'm not doing this anymore. You're bold before every king. If you had a boyfriend who, who controlled you because he gave you money, you're able to look him in the eyes and say, you know, I've just been taught that God is my father now and God can take care of me. You become bold before every king. Glory be to God. Maybe it's your job or even in your family, you're threatened. We're going to throw you out. You may have been a Muslim or some other religion or some other, you know, denomination and, you know, what born again? You're not even, ha that's not happening in this house. People that have had rulership over you, when you see the star, you become bold and you become courageous. And the, the, the wise men were able to stand before Herod. And Herod was troubled. He was agitated. But whatever king has been in your life, whatever king has ruled you, whatever habit, whatever relationship has been a king in your life, when you see his star, it's actually his star. When you see his star, when you receive the light of salvation, then you can be bold and confident and courageous to stand on the word of God before every king. And no king will steal your testimony, child of God. No king will steal your testimony. The wise men said, we have seen his star. And they were ready to travel as long as it took, as far as it took. They came all the way from the east, but they knew that something symbolic something significant something life-changing had happened to them that is what happened to you when you got born again and if you recently got born again you've got to understand that that something happened to you so don't be distracted by the kings that are troubled don't be distracted by the agitation going on around you you're bold now you've seen the star you've seen his star and you're bold and courageous before every king glory be to god when you see his star the second thing that happens is you live to worship him. I love this because there are two, two, two sides to this. You live to worship him. You know, the, the wise men said, where is he who has been born king? They were ready to come and worship a ruler. They knew he was king. Now, they believed he was just another earthly king, which is why Herod was getting very worked up. But we know him as the king of kings and the lord of lords. Hallelujah. But they knew that this was a king. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. That's how far. In the east and have come to worship him. This tells me so much. It even tells me that the rulership and the kingship of Jesus is for everybody. They called him the king of the Jews, but his star was seen in the east. And his star reached out and touched them, even though they were not, you know, in, 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 in Judea and, and, and Jerusalem at that time. So he says, we have come to worship him. We have come to worship him. And look at what he says in verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. That's when they actually now, now found the baby, with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Child of God, when you see his star, you live to worship him. Isn't it interesting that Herod, let me just, let me just show you this because this is very interesting, that Herod said in, in verse 8, and we know he was lying, he said, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Mm -mm. Nobody can do the finding of Jesus for you. Nobody can see his star for you. You can never really truly worship Jesus if you have not seen his star. If you haven't surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, if you haven't received the star that rose out of Jacob, if you haven't received him as Lord and Savior into your heart, if you've not been able to say, look, you're not born, born again. You may be born into a religion or born into a church, but there is a time in your life when you consciously, under with understanding, surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You could be as young as five years old, four years old, 80 years old, but you know that Jesus is the Son of God. He's not just a prophet. He's the son of God. You know that he was crucified. You know that he died. You know he actually died. He bore your sins, bore your sicknesses, went to hell for you. And you know that by the power of God, by the greatest display of God's power ever, greater than creation, by the display of resurrection power, 
he rose again with you in mind. And when you receive him, the Bible says you rose together with him. You died with him, you were buried with him, but you rose together with him. Glory be to God. That's what happens, and then you live to worship him. But Herod said, you know, when you find him, tell me that I may worship him. Mm -mm. It doesn't happen. Coming to know Jesus doesn't happen by proximity. It doesn't happen by osmosis. It doesn't happen by relationship. It's not contagious. You may be influenced by somebody, but you've got to see his star yourself. And when you see his star yourself, then you can worship him. And you will live to worship him. These were wise men, but they were not embarrassed. They were not ashamed. You know, you've got to be able to publicly worship Jesus. And this is something we often talk about during Thanksgiving as well. You've got to be able to publicly declare who Christ is. You can't be a, a secret Nicodemus believer. You can't be a clandestine worshiper. You've got to be able to say, look, Jesus is everything to me. And the wise men came and they were ready to lay down everything and worship him. Even practically, if you put a crown on your head, you can't bow down with a crown, which symbolizes all your achievements, all your successes, all your triumphs. You can't put a crown on your head and worship. And you know, if you read, if you read the Bible and you actually look at the Hebrew and the Greek words for worship, you'll find out that every single time worship is used, those words actually mean to bow down, to prostrate, to kneel down, to fall down, to, to kiss like a dog licks or kisses his, his master's hand. Those are all the things that mean worship, worship, proscunio, worship. When you bow down and you worship, a crown on your head will hit the ground. Child of God, when you see his star, whatever you have be been before that time, whatever achievements, whatever education, whatever wealth, whatever inventions, Whatever it is you think has made you who you have been up until that point. These men were called wise men. So they had some, some wisdom. They had some interpretation. They looked at the star and they understood something. But despite all their wisdom, they were ready to worship him. Are you ready to live to worship him? Are you ready to live to give up all your crowns and your, your achievements and everything that has made you somebody up until this time to worship him? You know, that's why you can't really say things like, I'm a self-made person. How can you be a self-made person? You're a God-made person. When you see his star, everything you have achieved before that time pales into insignificance and falls to the ground before the King of kings and Lord of lords. When you see his star, you are bold before every king who is troubled and agitated as what has happened to you. When you see his star, you live to worship him. And thirdly, and this is really sweet, when you see his star, you receive your guidance from him. Glory be to God. I mean, how about getting born again and still being lost? How about getting born again and still being confused? Jesus said confidently that my sheep, they hear my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. That means he wants to lead you. When you see his star, you get guided. And look at what happened to these wise men in verse 9. He says, when they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east. So it's almost like they saw the star. They had to make the commitment. They had to make the public declaration, like when you get born again, you know, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. When they came to Herod, and they said, yes, we have seen his star, and we've come to worship him. And the star knew that they were ready to be led. So it wasn't just something that happened, you know, secretly. I know there are some countries where you have to be secret believers, secret disciples, or, you know, you could get killed or something. But these people, they came out boldly. And when they did that, the next thing that happened, after they turned away from Herod, they just turned away from Herod, the next thing that happened was the star, the same star, which they had seen in the east, the star was there all along, watching them to know if they were going to make that declaration. And the star that they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over. It guided them. To where their hearts were going stood over where the young child was when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy they were excited again there's his star again there's his star again and it's right here above this place this must be the king of the jews and when they had come into the house they saw the young child they didn't stop and begin to argue and say child king no this star should have led us to a grown six-foot man that looked like the way a king should look like King Saul, you know, a big man. No, they saw the child, but something had happened in their hearts. Some kind of revelation had taken place. And if you bring it to our dispensation, when you get born again, when you get born again, a change happens on the inside of you. Jesus comes to live in you. And the certain things you just know with a knowing on the inside of you. And they saw this young child. 
I mean, a child, a young child. They came into the house, and there was the child. And they knew, certainly, that this was the king, and with Mary, his mother. And they fell down. Wise men fell down before a child and worshipped him. And when they, when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now look at verse 12, another example of guidance. And being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Don't go back to that guy. He doesn't want to worship any child. He wants to kill the child. They departed for their own country another way. When you see his star, you receive your guidance from him. And this is one of the greatest things about giving your life to Jesus Christ. This, for me, has been one of the greatest benefits I've enjoyed as a child of God. Confusion is far away from me as the east is from the west. I know the voice of God. I've developed a fellowship in a fellowship with God. I know his voice. He speaks to me. He doesn't just speak to me for me to get goosebumps. He guides me. Glory be to God. I heard of a man of God who came into a city, and he had to go preach somewhere. And he didn't know where he was going to preach. He didn't have directions. He didn't have anywhere. And he just, you know, just got into the, the, the entrance of the city. He says, okay, Lord, take me to the church. And the Lord took him to the church. How about that? The Lord took him to the church. How about that? He got to a junction. Okay, Lord, left or right? Left. He goes left. Okay, right or left? Right. Okay, two blocks or one block? One block. Okay, and he was right there at the church. I mean, he's, Jesus is the best map or the best GPS you can have. But you see, you've got to know that when you see his star, guidance is part of the package. They were guided by the star to, to Jesus, and they were guided and divinely warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. And I'm not sure these men had experienced this kind of divine guidance before they saw his star. Child of God, you shouldn't be lost. You shouldn't be confused. You shouldn't be like those who keep saying, I, I don't know what, to ha what tomorrow will bring. No! You know what tomorrow will bring. It's going to bring better and better things for you. For the path of the righteous is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. So you know what tomorrow may bring. Well, look, even if I know what tomorrow will bring, how do I know how to get into tomorrow? You are ordered. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. You are guided by him. Look at what he says in Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. These are the sons of God. When you see his star and you receive Jesus into your heart, you are a son of God. And Psalm 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp, I love this, to my feet and a light to my path. May you receive guidance from him. May you open up your heart and open up yourself to the word of God and the spirit of God to hear his voice and know his voice. And may you, may you worship him with all of your being. May you receive boldness to stand before every king. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father, for this refreshing word. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise. This season, we will focus on you and on Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside 
will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at fresh TV and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly mp3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.